Hey guys, well, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Dr. T here, living your best life. This one's going to be a little bit short, but I wanted to give you some insight into why most people's workouts don't work. And I don't know if you watched it in my other videos, but like I said, I've been training people most of my life. I've had a lot of experience with it. People that compete, doing my own competitions, etc., and just working in giant box gyms and managing training staff you kind of get to see uh, people in there every day clients and then just people just working out over the years etc so i'm going to tell you what i've seen over the last 20 plus close to 30 years of doing this and the number one reason people's workouts don't work or don't produce the results that they expect is they're way, way, way over training. I've done a, a short video on this. It was a real quick, uh, just a one minuter, but it's really common. I'll be in the gym either working out or, or in there with clients or whatever. And to see people, for example, in that video, I talked about guys doing chest for an hour and a half doing dumbbell presses for 30 minutes god knows how many sets they're doing then they go on to flat bench then they're going on to cables then they're going on to decline then you see them at the dip rack and i literally will do an entire bicep back workout finish off with a 20 minute kettlebell circuit and abs and i'm leaving the gym and the same people are still doing chest that have been doing it for an hour and a half and then they wonder why they're not getting results they're probably done 20 30 sets of chest right and they probably do that twice a week and then they, they think to themselves why aren't i getting the results that i should be getting that's the biggest one people grossly grossly overtrain, and there's different schools of thought on that right like like some people fall into the camp of the dorian yates philosophy that one set is enough just annihilated the living crap out of it for one set and then recover, you know, rinse and repeat type mentality. And there's something to be said for that. I've tried it and it works, but it's hard for a lot of reasons. I like it, I like it, I like it. But when you're only going into the gym and Dorian Yates didn't, it's a little bit misleading because people always say, oh, well, Dorian only did one set. Yeah, but he also warmed up to that weight especially when you're lifting heavy weight right you have to build up to it so he really only called his one working set his his set meaning like a, for bench press for example maybe he was going to work up to i don't know 275 for example he might have done 135 as a warm-up set then jumped up to 225 and then maybe did another set and then his last set he counts as his working set so the warm-up sets never counted and then like, for example, what he would do would be annihilate the crap out of it, go till absolute failure, then do some negatives all the way till absolute negative failure. And it's a little misleading. Like I said, for, for example, for back, I know some of the workouts that I've seen, um, he would do that maybe like on a vertical pulling and then do the same type set uh for horizontal pulling so but back's a big muscle so you need to hit it from a lot of diff different angles so and i've tried it it works the tricky part to that philosophy is that you have to be on your a game when you go to the gym if you're not a hundred percent focused you're just going to sandbag it right meaning you're not going to push yourself to the limits of absolute failure and then crack out some negatives and and just totally smoke yourself so some days you just come to the gym and you're kind of tired and you just mentally go through the motions and, and I get it. So that's the downside. When you're only hitting it like to total failure, you got to really make that, that's your money set, right? So you got to really be mentally and physically focused. So sometimes that's a little bit hard, but contrary to that, what you don't need to do is 18, 20 sets of a body part in a particular workout. I don't even do 18 to 20 sets in an entire week for a body part. 
and I'm going to do a lot of in-depth videos on this in the future, how to design your workout program. And it's, it's a, I'll, I'll keep this one short, but it's a sliding scale, right? You can have volume to a certain extent. Once you have too much volume, you can't possibly recover from it unless you're taking giant amounts of testosterone and SARMs and different types of juice. You can't possibly recover that, especially as a natural, especially as you're getting older, your recovery ability isn't quite what it is when you're 20. When you're 20, 22, right, 25, your testosterone is through the roof and you could, you could over train a little bit or have a lot of volume and you're going to recover for the most part. That's the tricky part is discovering, figuring out what your threshold is. And that's why you need to experiment a lot. I'm going to, like I said, I'll do videos on how to design a workout program that works for you later. But honestly, it's about experimentation and you got to figure out what your threshold is. Obviously, recovery ability depends on a lot, right? Rest, nutrition, big, big, big one is nutrition, age. Again, if you're taking anything extra, of course, that's going to be a big uh, bonus. Um, and then just individual genetics, right? Some people have a higher capacity. They could just train more sets in a particular week and they're going to recover for it. And some people can't. I've actually always been able to recover a decent bit from a good bit of volume. Part of that is, like I said, all those things combined. My, my, uh, I have good genetics, luckily. My diet's always on point. And really just over the years I've been doing, I think you build up that, that capacity for volume. But I oscillate. I oscillate between programs where I'm doing a little bit higher volume uh, to programs where I'm doing less volume, more frequency, or maybe I'm doing really high intensity, like I said, like a, like a Dorian Yates approach, or I'm doing like a, like a Mike Mentzer uh, pre-exhaust, and we could talk about that in another video, but kind of the concept is really super high intensity, lower volume. So like I said, it, it's a balancing act. Of, you can have all of it. You can have really high volume, high intensity, and high frequency. You'll just overdo it. And that's what I see all the time in the gym. I see really high volume, pretty decent intensity, especially off of the younger guys in the gym. They want to hit it pretty hard. And they're hitting it pretty hard with a lot of volume. You can have those two things going on at the same time for any extended period of time, honestly, because you're just going to overdo it. So that's my advice. And like I said, figure out what your threshold is and if you're a new beginner or intermediate workout person with not a lot of years of experience even if you're younger generally and there's like i said there's a lot of generalizations here but generally i might do let's say chest <sighs> maybe a total of 16 sets in a week if i'm doing a high volume workout also it might be 16 sets maybe on a monday i'm doing four sets of um, flies and then four sets of cables and then on a thursday i might do another eight sets of other chest exercises i didn't hit maybe inclines and some kind of machine exercise right on the on the second workout so maybe for the whole week i have a total of 16 sets that's more than enough and the other general rule of thumb i would give you is if you are your workout it's a good way to kind of gauge it. If your workout is taking longer than an hour, not counting if you're going to do cardio, right? I don't, I don't really include that. But if your actual lifting workout is taking you more than 45 minutes to an hour, you're doing something wildly wrong. Meaning you're, you're one, you're overtraining, or two, you're on your cell phone a lot between your sets and taking really long rest times and bullshitting. And you're not, your intensity is really low. So one of those two things or both of those things is happening because it's really common over the last, like I said, 30 years of being in gyms, it, I'll be done an entire bicep and back workout, done with my kettlebell workout and leaving the gym. And I still see people doing the same body part, doing triceps. I seen a guy doing triceps, must have been an hour and a half tricep workout. I don't know what the hell you could do for triceps for an hour and a half. <laughs> that would be effective. <laughs> So that's a general, general rule that I have. If I'm lifting for more than an hour, something's wrong. Usually, my, honestly, my, my lifting workouts are about 45 minutes. I warm up pretty quick. If I'm going to crack out some chest, I'll get down. I'll, I'll crack out a set of 30, 40 push-ups to warm up real good, and then I go into my chest workout. 
My lifting takes about 45-ish minutes, and then I always finish maybe an hour tops if I'm doing a higher volume. I'm always wrapping it up at the end with either high-intensity intervals, cardio, or high-intensity kettlebell routine um, interval training like that. So I'll do videos on like how, to, how I do those, how I structure those also, but that's just some general guidelines. And if you feel like you're not making the progress that you think that you should be, that's the first place to start, honestly. Start analyzing how much time you're spending in the gym and how much week, I look at things as like a weekly volume and then a monthly volume, depending on the program, right? It's kind of how I look at it. Look at those things and if you're breaking those rules, you need to change your workout and you're going to get much better results. So I hope that helps. And like I said, I'll do a lot more videos on uh, how to design the programs and, and give you some jumping off points and kind of some templates to look at in the future. But all right, hope that helps. See you guys.